Hey, how are you doing today? Just a couple quick questions, more of housekeeping. Um, who's your agent and what gym have you been training at? And then when you look at how COVID-19 affected the 2020 football season, do you feel like the 2021 class is going to have a certain mental toughness to them? Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, my agent is Scott Thiel, uh, elite athletic management. Um, he's a amazing person as well as the other agents that are um, a part of the agency. It's a, a true family, um, very genuine people. Um, very thankful that, that I'm able to be with them. Um, I've been training out in Phoenix, Arizona at Exos, um, which is where uh, our agency is based out of. So I'm able to be, I was able to be around them um, every day and, and really build relationships. And yeah, for sure. There's, you know, this is, you know, nobody's used to this or by now we are, but we weren't. Um, so no, nobody else has ever had to go through this stuff through a full season um, with the, the precautions and the testing and everything that we have. So, um, I definitely think that, you know, looking 10 years from now, you could, this class is going to be special because, um, just so the, the mental toughness, um, that, you know, everybody has, has built to go through, um, and play a full season and off season with the, you know, the climate of the world, um, right now. So, you know, definitely, you know, it's, it's not ideal, um, but, we, especially the Big 12, very thankful we, we were able to play in the fall um, and, and take advantage of um, of a full season, able to play 10 full games. So I'm just just thankful that that I was able to play this fall. Let's go next to Tyler Jeffries. Hey, Briley, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Hey, I just got a quick question for you. Um, with you having such a scary call with that injury that resulted in you having short-term paralysis. What was your inspiration to come back and have a great season, which led to you tied for second in the Big 12 for touchdown receptions by tight end? Yeah, so um, the injury he's referring to was 2019 uh, while I was still at Northern Iowa. Um, went into a hit on KOR with my, my head down, stumbled a little bit, kind of whiffed and just hit the top of the crown of my helmet on the back of one of my players, actually um and came out with no concussion like everything was okay but I was I was laying there for you know 15 20 seconds like not really able to able to move or or know like it was it was a crazy experience like it was I was able to not not moving you know I could hear people talking to me couldn't really respond um you know fortunately I was able to fully come back and I had to go to the hospital but it was just because I had a little bit of pain in my neck from the hit um just precautionary but um, you know, it's a you know, almost a life changing experience to just know like how close I really could have been to, you know, maybe never walking again and it not being short term and it being permanent. So it was like it was really an eye opening experience for me. Um, I wasn't able to fly back with the team. I had to stay out in uh, Youngstown, Ohio um, and fly back the next day. Um, but, you know, I knew football is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to do. I, I love this sport. So there was no. There was never a question on, you know, is this, you know, this experience going to make me not want to play football anymore? Um, it comes with the game, especially the way I play. I, I play physical, um, you know, so things are going to happen. But, you know, I'm just very blessed I was able to walk away with that situation with um, without any any major injuries or anything. Let's go next to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bradley, good to see you again. What, what do you think you did best at pro day today? Um, I think I was just able to showcase the athlete that I am. Um, I think I jumped, jumped pretty well. Um, just I think overall I had a pretty good day. I was able to jump 37 and a half on uh, the vert, 10-3 on the broad, um, 26 bench. Uh, not sure 100% on the, the numbers while we were out there. I know one of the 40 numbers I heard was 464. Um, would have liked to have been a little bit faster on that and hitting the hitting in the high four fives. But I think just, you know, the biggest thing I was able to do is overall just show show the type of athlete I am. I think uh, routes went really well and just show that, you know, from 
whether it's it's strength or speed, change of direction, anything like that, I'm you know able to do uh, things at a high level um, and really really show my versatility um, as a tight end, obviously, but just overall as an athlete. What what are your expectations for the draft? Do you have a certain round in mind you think you might go in yet? Um, like Wyatt said, I'm the same way. I haven't really, you know, I don't try to try to think about it too much. It's fun to look at mock drafts and stuff, but you know, those don't mean anything. And and the way that the draft is, you never know until it happens. Like, um, you know, I've heard stories, guys going in thinking, you know, hearing they're going to be a third or fourth round pick going in and all of a sudden they're a free agent, uh, you know, they'll call you and say, okay, we're going to take you with this pick. And all of a sudden you don't get a call and free agency is here. Like, you know, so whatever it is, whether it's earlier, whether it's later, whether it's a free agent, um, you know, a team's going to get the same me. I'm going to come in and compete uh, to make a 53 man roster and do what I can for a team. Um, you know, like why I said it too, the, the higher, the better, um, the more financial stability you get and, you know, a little bit, um, safer when it comes to fall camp. But at the end of the day, you can make it from anywhere. And with my journey in football, I think, you know, everything that I've done is, you know, we had to work hard and, and uh, you know, make nothing into something. And I, I plan to do that, whether it's, like I said earlier, late free agent. Cool. Thanks, Briley. Good luck. Yeah, appreciate you. Go to Karen Kornacki. Hi, Briley. Hello. You Blue Springs guy, you? Yes, ma'am. So you know uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, and have you talked to them at all? Um, I was able to talk with them briefly um, at the at one of the All Star at the All Star event uh, that I went to about a month and a half ago. And you know, I mean, they've had a history of tight ends from Tony <laughs> sure. Gonzalez to uh, Travis Kelsey, and so For when sure. you look and pattern yourself and you you try to get tips have you looked at the Kansas City Chiefs to up your game? Oh, without a doubt. I live 10, 12 minutes away from the Chiefs stadium right now. I grew up going um going to Chiefs games. I've went to Chiefs games the past couple of years. I mean, I grew up watching Tony Gonzalez before I ever knew I was going to play the tight end position and I just love the way that that he played the game. Um and he's one of my earliest inspirations uh to football. And then um, in comes Travis Kelsey and the best tight end in the NFL right now. Um, I was, I've was i been able to really study a lot of his film over the past couple of years and take things from his game um, and implement it into mine. Um, you know, you just want, you want to learn from the best um, and learn, learn from those players. So, um, you know, whenever you have a guy like Travis Kelsey, a guy like Tony Gonzalez in Kansas City, you know, you – you definitely pay attention and, and take notice. And uh, I like to I like to steal things from their game and add it to mine because, you know, they do it. They do and did it at such a such a high level. And lastly, just what kind of feedback have you been getting? You know, whether you've got any today, what are you working on from now until the draft? And thank you very much. It's so nice to see yeah. you. Hey, I appreciate your time. You being on here. Um, you know, I heard a lot of good things today. Um, I think I was able to surprise people with uh with my numbers on uh, almost everything um, that we did today, which is great. Um, you know, the I've lost about 10, 11 pounds over the past um, nine weeks, uh, mainly all body fat, um, which is nice. I'm, I'm slimmer. I came in at 240 today. I played this season right around 250. Um, so I had, you know, a few scouts you know, tell me I look good. I made the right, um, the right changes over the past couple of weeks, but you no, know, everything, everything's been good um to this point especially uh the things that i have today so going into this next phase um you know the the numbers i was able to put up today um i can go to sleep tonight knowing that you know if may 1st comes around and i don't get a call during the draft or you know whatever it is i can go to sleep tonight knowing that um it's not because i didn't do everything i could at pro day because you know i feel confident in what i did um you know and God is amazing for allowing me to be here, just even in this position. Um, I thank him for, for allowing me to go out there and showcase my skills the way that I was able to today. And I mean, you know, I did what I needed to do in my head. Uh, so, you know, it's up to them what they do with those numbers. So I'll just be focusing on, you know, more football training over um, the next few, few weeks and a few months and, uh, 
be ready the the first time that I can you know step on somebody's facility and and get going as a, a football player. Thank you. Let's go next to Herbie Tiope. Hey, Brawley, how are you, man? And thanks for taking the time to do this with us. Hey, I'm great. I, I appreciate your time. How are you? Hey, yeah, I'm well, thanks. Uh, basically, the same question I'm going to ask you that I asked Wyatt earlier. Obviously, you were one of two Wildcats to get invited to Indianapolis for the Combine. And what do you think is your biggest regret right now, not being able to showcase your skill set on a national stage and compete against the other tight ends across the country? Yeah, I mean, um, it was a dream of mine since I was a little kid uh, to go to the, to the combine. Um, so once I, <laughs> I, uh, had seen a couple of people on Twitter, got the combine invite. Um, I was taking a shower, checked my phone and it wasn't like I hadn't gotten it yet. Check my spam on my, uh, on one of my old email addresses from back when I was at Northern Iowa and it was in there. So, uh, my uncle, um, his wife and my fiance were all out um, in the living room. And all of a sudden they hear me start screaming while I'm in the shower. <laughs> and I told him I got it. So, I mean, that was just absolutely amazing. Like that was really a dream come true um, to receive that. So, you know, it's obviously it's, it's not fun not being able to be there and get that experience. But um, at the end of the day, it's what made today so important. Um, and, you know, I believe that I was able, like I said, you know, to put up numbers that I, can go to sleep comfortably with tonight um, and, you know, can affect it. It's not something I could have changed. It's not something any of the other 300 and so players could have changed. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. And my final question to you, you mentioned studying Tony Gonzalez and Travis Kelsey. So I'm going to yes. assume that you're a film junkie or you consider yourself to be a film junkie. What other no. tight ends have you taken a hard look at uh, as, you, as you try to mold your game or pattern your game or take the best out of somebody and incorporate it into your style? Yeah, one of the biggest um, outside of those two would be George Kittle um, with the Niners just because of, you know, his emphasis in the run game just as much as um, receiving. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I bring to an NFL roster going into this draft is, um, you know, I can be the point of attack in the run game and we, you can run the ball right behind me. And, you know, if the game's on the line, you can throw me the ball. If it's third and long, um, you know, I want to be the one that's called. If it's third and short, I want to be where you run the ball. Um, that's my mentality. And that's the mentality that he takes. You know, he he's a hard working, gritty, um, gritty person. And uh, that's the, the approach that I take you know, to the to the field also. So he's one of the biggest guys I've been able to watch um, both receiving and run blocking. Thanks. Thank you. Let's go to Griffin Floyd. <laughs> Hey, Briley, you said that, uh, you know, physicality is a big part of your game. Uh, do you focus on blocking or is that, you know, a way that you can set yourself apart to NFL teams? Yeah. Um, you know, coming into this season, if you asked me, I would have said that I you know just from film um, would be considered more of a, a receiving tight end. But, you know, now going into after, you know, this season at Kansas State, it's funny because when I talk to scouts, you know, some will say, oh, yeah, you're uh, a good receiving tight end that, you know, we didn't know you could block that well. And then I talk to some and they're like, yeah, you're a, a great run blocking tight end. And I was surprised at how well you were in the receiving game. And it's just like, you know, I love to hear that because it shows the versatility that I was talking about. Um, so I think, you know, I, I emphasize that was one of the biggest things I worked on. Um, this past year, especially whenever COVID shut everything down, was was I emphasized run blocking because, you know, quite frankly, when I chose Kansas State, I told myself this is where I need to go because if I can't block at that level, I can't play in the NFL, and if I can't block, I'm not going to see the field there because of how much they um, emphasize the run game, um, even before the the passing game sometimes. So it was you know, betting on myself and, and the emphasis that I put this off season to, to just work um, and improve myself as a player. And, um, you know, like I said, I think I love whenever I hear different things from different scouts um, because it, that just goes to show the versatility I believe that I have. Awesome. Thank you, Briley, and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Let's go last here to Ryan Black. Briley, hey, how you doing today? 
Great. How are you? Doing pretty well. Well, just, uh, you know, as you're getting closer and closer to when the, the draft is going to be and then how things work out there, just how long have you thought about the, the opportunity to get to play in the NFL? Since I was old enough to know what the NFL was, I mean, I can – like I can see me uh, when I was couldn't have been older in first grade. I remember watching uh, watching football and telling my grandpa um, that I, that I was going to be there one day, and that was going to be me whenever uh, whenever I'd see teams play. Um, so it's just it's been my dream, my passion, and what I felt was my calling uh, since I was just a little kid, and now it's coming into into fruition is just like, I mean, this is just amazing. Like it's, it's just a true blessing. And then Bradley, I remember during one of the, the press conferences that we had with you during the, during the football season last fall, you, yep. you had mentioned, uh, cause you were asked a question about K-State recruiting and specifically the tight end position. How yep. much pride do you take in the fact that, I mean, I would say that K-State part in landing the guy they did, Dan, Daniel Amater Bebe probably came yep. from seeing what they did with you last fall. Yeah, um, you know, just to reiterate what I've said about Kansas State is just like this offense is built for for tight ends. Um, you know, using two to three tight ends or two tight ends and a fullback um, in majority of of the uh, formations. Um, I was actually able to work with with his brother as I was out um, at EXO. So I I haven't met him, but I've met his brother. Um, I know that they're just great people. So I'm actually really excited for him and excited for the other um, tight ends that are at Kansas state, because, you know, this is, like I said, it's a great place for tight ends and um, you know, they're going to, they're going to showcase the tight ends for sure. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, to see how that goes for them. And I'm uh, excited to see how, you know, my time at Kansas state um, has prepared me for uh, NFL um, offense, which, you no know, tight ends are becoming one of the focal points um, there as well. So I'm very excited for that. Very f thankful for my time at Kansas State.